The first people to permanently call what is now the United States home arrived in what is now the United States around 13,000 years ago. These people are the ancestors of our modern-day Native Americans and are the descendants of the people previously mentioned to have crossed from Siberia over the Bering Land Bridge into what is now Alaska. A technology used by descendants of these early Native Americans was greatly increased around 5,000 years later by the Anasazi. They were a tribe who lived in the southwest of the U.S. today, and they created advanced irrigation systems and had fortified cliff houses, including the world-famous Cliff Palace in Mesa Verde National Park. They then disappeared. By 1142, several Native American tribes in the northeast of the U.S. today created the oldest surviving doc- democracy, if you want to call it that the Iroquois Confederacy. Although it wasn't called that, it was made to maintain peace between these tribes. Here comes the controversy, otherwise known as Christopher Columbus. He arrived in 1492, and his crew arrived, look, or his crew looked on the land for him. He never actually went on North America. He never went on the land. But... When he went back to Spain to report back to King Ferdinand the Third and Queen Elis- or sorry Isabel the First, he told them about the great swaths of gold and the native people living back in North America as well as the Caribbean. This started the Caribbean. This sorry, this started the colonial era, which lasted for hundreds of years to come. Spain later sent Pedro de Aveles to build a settlement in. in- what he named St. Augustine in what was called Florida, which means land of flowers. He established St. Augustine, Florida on September 8, 1565. It still claims to be the U.S.'s oldest city today. In 1585, Sir Walter Raleigh, a good friend of Queen Elizabeth I, founded the Rona Colony, which later disappeared. All that he found were the words carved into a tree, Croatoan which its meaning is still debated today. It is one of the U.S.'s great unsolved mysteries. In 1607, the British built their first colony known as Jamestown. It was their first settlement in North America. They later had issues with the Native Americans, with both sides fighting each other frequently. It was also ravaged with starvation and death. On November 11, 1620, the pilgrims arrived on the Mayflower, supposedly landing on Plymouth Rock, which you can still see today, although this is debated. In 1692, the small city of Salem in what was then the Massachusetts Bay Colony saw three accusations of witchcraft, with the first of these 30 people to be killed being a slave named Tichuba. Today, the Salem witch trials have been called an example of hysteria. Uh, it's Hysteria is a weird paradox where people freak out over meaningless things. There's also an example of hysteria in France where many people danced until they died. In 1754, the British colonies began to unify when suddenly the French and Indian War began with the British colonists led by George Washington, leading to a British victory. In 1765, the colonists began getting their revolutionary ideas from the controversial Stamp Act of 1765. Even though it was revealed in 1775, the American Revolution began with a theme shot heard around the world, with an unknown soldier firing against the Americans. This happened during the Battle of Lexington and Concord. In 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed by many of the delegates who met at the First Continental Congress. Now there is no going back. On October 19, 1781, the Americans and French forced the British to surrender at the last battle of the American Revolution at the Siege of Yorktown, ending the American Revolution. But the British weren't done. They'll come back. 
in 1787, the U.S. Constitution was signed, which was created by James Madison. Twelve out of fifteen of the delegates signed it, around that many. In 1803, France sold its territory on North America for $15 million to what became the Louisiana Purchase, which itself was named after Louis XIV of France. This would put France in economic glory era until they would later run out of money and that started their own revolution. More on that on the French documentary. On August 24th, 1814, here come the British again. The British were still sour from losing their colonies and invaded the new U.S. capital of Washington, D.C. and set it ablaze. The War of 1812 was later proclaimed as a British victory and sorry Americans, but it's true. On April 12, 1861, the Civil War began with the Battle of Fort Sumter, a Confederate victory. They declared their victory brilliant, but the Union had something else to say. The Civil War raged on for four more years ending at the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia with Robert E. Lee of the Confederates and Ulysses S. Grant meeting and shaking hands. On April 15, 1865, John Wilkes Booth snuck behind the booth that Abraham Lincoln was watching a show at in Ford Theater and later shot and killed him, shaking the whole nation, even some of the former Confederate subjects in breakaways. On April 6, 1917, the U.S. entered World War I after Germany sent a letter to Mexico trying to get them to fight against the United States, but the British intercepted it and showed it to America, leading to the United States winning in World War I along with other nations. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor led to the U.S. entering World War II, which they also won with the other allies, including France, Germany, and the U.K. The U.S. also dropped two bombs in the two cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which you can still visit some ruins today. On October 28, 1962, the end of the world was avoided when an officer named Vasily Arkhipov refused to launch a torpedo, which would have caused the Soviets and the Cubans to declare war against the United States. This, ended, this effectively ended the Cold War. Between 1965 to 1968, 68,000 U.S. soldiers died while fighting in the Vietnam War, leading to a communist victory where Vietnam is still run by a communist com- or sorry, government today. On August 4, 1968, the nation was once again rocked by the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. when he was standing at his balcony with a few others in Birmingham, Alabama. This later sparked a civil rights movement which would be going on and you could argue that it still is going on right now in these times. On June 17, 1972, news broke across the nation and the world against President Nixon when the Watergate scandal was revealed. Three people broke into the Democratic Committee's headquarters inside of Watergate, leading to many to think they were affiliated with Nixon. Nixon tried to cover it up but failed, leading to his resignation. On September 11, 2001, the nation was shocked to hear that the famed Twin Towers in New York City were later bombed by two suicide bombers who hijacked planes and later crashed directly into them. 2,977 people passed away in this horrible incident. And I ended on October 16, 2016, where the current president, Donald Trump, was elected, leading to the Republican-Democrat divide solidifying. And with that, that is my history of the United States. I know that my videos on history videos aren't really getting that many views. 
I'm spending a buttload of work making them. So if you want me to make another one, tell me what country or state you want me to do. Actually, I can't do countries because I only do them on their national days. Stay tuned and I will tell you what country is coming next in the description. Thanks for watching.